I film a lot of reviews. Reviews of small things, fiddly things, things with uh, tiny little details. And as a reviewer, I like to be able to show those details on screen and let you see exactly what's going on, whether it's the finishing, the machining, how to use the device with the little tiny switches, all sorts of stuff like that. And of course, I'm pretty well set up for that. I've got cameras, I've got lenses, I've got macro lenses, I've got big, beautiful lighting. I'm pretty good for doing that. But I was intrigued. I went through in, uh, Amazon the other day and I saw a $30, it was on sale, it was $30 USB microscope. And it opened a whole world of questions in my mind. First of all, the main thing was, for people who don't have all the gear that I have to do that sort of thing, would this be a viable alternative for creating close-up content for videos, for creators? That was my main question. Could this be a, a, a tool to be used beyond its usual purposes? The other thing that really uh, interests me was, there are times when I'm in the editing process and I realize I've forgotten to grab something or I've missed a, focus on something and I just really want to show a highlight detail, being able to have a USB webcam style close-up device would allow me to quickly plug it in, capture a little bit of image and insert that into the edit and then move on. It wouldn't be uh, time wasted spent rebuilding the lighting setup and getting everything together. So, you know, as a very, very quick and dirty tool, could it be useful for content creators? And the third question is, would this be fun to play with? I like toys, I like gadgets, I like tech. So I thought I'd order one. I got one in and I've been playing with it for the last couple of weeks and the results have been interesting. I will get more into that in a second, but why don't we open the box, we'll take a look at what it is, I'll go through a rundown of how it works and all that sort of stuff. We'll come back, we'll talk a little bit more about it. Let's see you on the table. Okay, so this is the box that the digital microscope, the USB digital microscope comes in. Uh, fairly straightforward uh, packaging, nothing too much here. It does let you know that you can use it on a computer, a notebook, which is a computer, a tablet, an Android, uh, doesn't say anything about iPhone, so I'm not sure about that, but uh, forget all this stuff down here, just kind of suggested uses, I guess. It is a fairly straightforward box. On the inside, there's a few little bits and pieces. One is this manual, uh, yeah, lifetime warranty, free replacement. Um, okay, uh, I don't really want to take them up on that. It's not the most expensive device to replace, and I don't think it's gonna last forever anyway. But it's kind of nice that they sort of offer that, I guess. Some instructions about downloading their own app and installing that if you want to use it on the computer. I will point out that you don't really need to. There's lots of other options to, to, to do with that. Also, uh, some instructions about hooking it up with a uh, phone if you want to do that. Something I haven't really played with. I did uh, experiment a little bit, but I'm not going to use that for that purpose too often, so didn't really get into it. Uh, let's move that to the side. Let's take a look at what we get inside that box. The first thing is, of course, this right here. This is the uh, microscope, so, so to say. It's not really a microscope. Let's be really clear. This is, uh, I'm going to move coffee out of the way. This is a basically a USB camera. This section right here is a very inexpensive, very simple USB camera. It plugs into your computer via USB uh, and it's very, very straightforward in how that works. Moving down here, we've got a single lens. It's not a multiple or not a multiple lens and not a complex optical system. It is a single piece of lens. Uh, I believe it's a plastic lens and this adjusts the motion of that lens forward or backwards. This is a little guard to protect the uh, end of the lens if you need to. And of course you've got a little dust cap, which is somewhat transparent. So normally when you use it, you're gonna take that dust cap off. Uh, you're gonna aim it at whatever you want and then you're gonna focus it just by rolling that back and forward. Now it does say 40 times to 1000 times. If you know anything about microscopes, you know exactly how much uh, increase in resolution, how close that would actually be. These numbers are absolutely garbage. They mean nothing. This is further out, this is further in. Uh, I've done some measurements with the device and I found that the close it gets is close to maybe maybe 30, 35 times, depends on what scale you're measuring it on. On this side is a little switch which turns off the lights. You'll see the little ring of LED lights on the inside there. That will turn it on or off and then it will also cycle through different levels. You can click it up or down. And this one connects with your computer uh, for taking a picture if you're doing something. I would recommend use the on-screen controls of your, uh, your app or whatever you're using 
because every time you use that, your camera's gonna it's it's gonna shift a little bit, and you're gonna get a fuzzy picture. You're gonna get a much much sharper, clearer picture if you're using it for snaps or stills uh, using the app. Don't touch this when you're doing that. When you look at this bit, you find that that comes right off. And let me just show you that little section there. That is it coming right out. So that is at full and that is at the least. And the other interesting thing I found is that when this comes out, you can actually grab it. Uh, okay, I'm not gonna do it right now. That actually unthreads and can come right off. And so you can adjust uh, where it sits in the barrel a little bit finer tuned if you want. Let's push that all the way back in. I found that I don't really like this on there when I'm using it. It's, it's a weird thing. It's there to protect the lens is there to give you a little bit of distance, but I can actually get closer to objects if I take that off. And also, you see the little pattern and the, it's not an optically clear plastic, so it gives a really strange effect to light when you're filming stuff. It doesn't look very, very nice. Uh, on the other end of this cable, of course, is a USB plug to plug it in. And in the middle, you've got this little switch, and that's just a roller switch. And this just controls the LEDs. Doesn't affect the camera at all, but you can use this to adjust the light up or down if you don't want to touch what's on there. Uh, so that's that portion. I'm just gonna pop that on just to protect it for now. The other thing that comes in the box is a little stand. This is the stand right here on the base. It's got this little plasticky, sticky uh, bit. You can pull this right off. Don't worry, it's meant to come off. See, you can pull it off like that and give it a wash and then stick it back on. And that's just to give it some stability so it doesn't move around. Um, that part works quite well. Like I said, you can see it's dirty and dusty right now. I can just rinse that in water. We can plop that down. That works really well. This little bit right here is designed to hold the camera and that little line there goes in there like that to hold it in place. You wanna put it that way and your buttons are clear. If you put it in the other way around, see it's it's going over your buttons, so you can't really access them. So there's one way to do it there. Click that in, and then this little bit undoes, and you can move this around, get it in position, however you want, and lock it down. Let's try and do that. Let me be very clear. This stand is garbage. Look at that. It doesn't hold. This is threaded, so Tighten that up, get that into position, lock it. I mean, you're only ever gonna be coming from some sort of angle if your device or whatever you're, you're trying to fit film or take a picture of is right underneath, then you'd, you'd have it right there. Um, you, yeah, this is no good. This is not precise. You can't get any distance. You can't lock into position and anytime you touch it, the whole thing is gonna move radically. It's not very good. This is just, uh, to get you started. Luckily, the same company that make this microscope, they also make a stand, which looks like that. Let me just throw it on an angle and you can see, it looks fairly well made. It's quite lightweight aluminum, uh, comes all in parts when you put it together. This upper rod, well actually I'll show you, firm little uh, legs for the bottom, so it sits nice and full or firm. You've got adjustment right there and you can loosen that off. So it goes all the way up or down quite easily. And you can tighten it in to make it nice and tight or you can loosen it just a little bit to make it a little easier. These two little bits here, undo those, and they're gonna lock into the same bit that the uh, other stand goes to. Try and get it in position. There you go. And now you've got something that you can actually use because this is nice and firm. Uh, this sits fairly straight. It's on a slight angle, if you can see that. Um, but you can pad it, you can adjust it a little bit if you want to get it going straight up and down. And you can lower it right down as needed and tighten it down just to get exactly where you want it to be. Whoops. Let's get, nah. Come on, let's get up there. That's where I want it to be. And let's plug this in so we can actually do something with it. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is remove this. I always forget and then I get a weird blurry looking image and I don't like it. Uh, so we're gonna take that off. So we do that. And I gotta to go to my software and make sure I'm actually 
recording. Okay, so now we're recording. This is basically, uh, as you can see, it's unfocused. Let's throw something of interest under there. I've got a fork, it's just a random thing that I'm gonna throw under there and you should be able to see completely out of focus. And let's bring that in a little bit. Oh. And there we go. So that is kind of what you get out of this. It's not the best, clearest image. You can see there's a little bit of milkiness in that top right corner. A lot of wobble shadow going on. And keep in mind that this is being lit, not just by the camera, but by my own little uh, lighting setup here. Let's go in a little bit closer. And I know a fork is not the most interesting thing in the world to look at. There we go. I'll move that back. You can see we're getting some fairly decent magnification here. Definitely not a thousand. A thousand is enough that you should be able to see blood cells. And this is not getting in anywhere near that direction. And as you can see, like most cameras, you have a very, very narrow field of focus getting that back in focus and the tip at the same time very very tricky let's just adjust that lighting on the device turning it on that's turning it to its highest and it becomes very very shadowed this is using the built-in light on the uh, microscope which i don't really like and this is when i turn it off and i'm using my ambient light that i've got for filming Zoom back up uh, in a bit, I guess. Went the wrong way. Go all the way in. Let's get as close as we can get. And adjust. And it's a combination of adjusting the, f the uh, well, getting the base very nice there. I'm going to pull away from that. Yeah, it's a combination of adjusting the height of the microscope from the subject. And the um, focus range of the, uh, the lens itself. Pull that back. Anyway, let's move on to something a bit more interesting than, than a fork. I do have this. This is a uh, slightly jam damaged, recently removed uh, CPU from a computer. And when you look at it, you'll see that the chip or the pins, I should say, are all bent on one corner. Let's take a look at that. We'll get that under there. We'll raise that up just a little bit. That is very close. So when we are that close, you can see we're getting fairly sharp on sort of the, the base of it. There you go. The base of those pins is very, very sharp, but the field of the depth of field is so shallow that the top of those pins has gone completely out of focus. If I move that all the way up, we start bringing the top of those pins into focus. Oh, look at that. And we are talking about less, less than a millimeter in distance from the top of those pins right down to the base. So that, it's a very interesting image. I'll we'll play with it a little bit, but it's it's definitely not very usable for filmmaking. Although I think I think this is quite uh, quite intriguing. We are going to switch this to a wider field, less magnification. See a little bit more. There we go. Pull it all the way up. Get a look at that corner. Let's see, do I need to go in or out with this? We need to go closer. Oh. 
and there you go you can see when I go all the way out because I've got my lens screwed all the way in I'm getting a little bit of a uh, vignetting around the side That's, uh, find the focus there we go there we go and you can see that corner they're all perfectly lined up and that corner right there they are just smushed down this is this is uh you know could be fixable i'm not going to do it because it's just far too much fiddling to uh fix that up but uh there you go that is what a cpu looks like when it's very very damaged and very very close and there where where am i it is hard to navigate sometimes when you're doing this also i just realized i've got it angled differently on my screen than it's actually sitting so let's uh pull up And get ourselves a wider field. There we go. Whoa. Fairly large image there. Takes a little bit of fiddling to get your focus. Turn it around so that makes sense. There you go. And that's what that corner looks like from this distance. And we can bring it all the way up. Uh, turning it around really made a difference. Much easier to mag or uh, to navigate. There you go. Now I recommend if you're going to play with one of these and use it, yes, the built-in light, which I'll turn back on now. You know, it it does add some illumination. It's not the most pleasing light, but if you're just using this to play with and to explore or to do little tasks. Um, hmm, that was interesting. Yeah, then it might be useful. Let's turn that off. That went higher, Go one more, and off. As you can see, you get a much nicer image if you're using a large external light. Uh, I just find it a lot more pleasing. Uh, the thing about this that you have to keep in mind is, as I said, that, sh that depth of field is very, very shallow. Uh, the tiniest little motion will throw it completely out of focus. And if you have anything, like I'll just show you, let's get that, um, those corner pins, the bent pins are fairly in focus. If I tilt this now, you'll see, actually at this level, it doesn't really matter too much. Go in a bit. Let's, it's going to be much more impactful if I bring it in closer. There you go. So those corner pins are fairly sharp and I have some milkiness around the edge. That's just imperfection of the lens, I guess. And if I tilt this, you'll see that portions are in focus and portions are falling out of focus just because they're moving away from that, that, you know, that focal plane, which is flat to the lens. It's always going to be flat to the lens. So there's not much you can do about that. I think I've shown you everything I need to at the close up level. I do have some thoughts and stuff that I want to talk about, which we'll do when we go back up top. But uh, I do want to mention that there are two things I haven't shown you that come with this. One is, um, an adapter. In fact, let me just do this right now. Uh, Let's turn that off. This section right here is actually quite smartly made. This is your traditional USB-A, and if you just grab this and flick it open, boom, now it's a micro USB. So if you have a phone or something, an older phone that uses micro USB, this is cross compatible. I'm assuming this was invented or conceived when this device first came out to suit that market. We've had since moved up to USB-C for most things. So there is a USB-C, an A to C adapter that comes in the box. Uh, my wife is currently using it, so I can't really show it to you. There's also a little uh, plastic a transparent sheet with some measurements that sub they call it a calibration sheet it, it doesn't calibrate or change anything you just use it to give yourself an idea of roughly how close you are filming anyway that's it for the uh, that close section let's go back up and uh, talk about it let's see you up there okay that was i can't even pronounce the name i'll flash it on screen right now that's the name of the company, uh, the USB microscope that they make. And of course, I had to purchase that add-on stand because the one that comes in the box 
absolutely useless. Uh, if you're gonna give this to a kid to play with, they're gonna get frustrated. If you are gonna work with it and try and do anything yourself, you're gonna get very frustrated. Just the fact that it really only has about two centimeters of travel from, from where it sits at its highest to the bottom doesn't give you a lot of fine control. Never mind the fact that it's wobbly, it doesn't lock down properly, it spins, it's gonna be shaky whenever you adjust stuff so you can't see what you're doing. The stand is useless. So that bumps the price up. It was about $30 for me to grab the USB microscope and it was about another $30 or $40 to grab the stand to go with it. So it's starting to build up in terms of price there, right? Still nowhere near the price of getting macro lenses and lighting and all that stuff. Uh, when you see me put it into the test, it's fairly clear. This is not really very useful for uh, a main camera for your up close uh, dirty details when you're doing reviews. If you were to be reviewing lenses, say, and you wanted to show, you know, the notches on the side of the numbers or, or get close up on the gears on the inside, the uh, the shutter leaves and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, this is not not useful for that. It's very, um, it's very dirty. Uh, the image is just not clear. It's not crystal. You saw that there was a, a big sort of glare a milkiness off about half the screen covered with that not very good for that thing um i don't feel let down 30 dollars or so I, I don't feel like i wasted my money i got i got to play with it i got to review a video out of it and that's that's kind of enough for me but for you guys if you are considering something like this for that purpose uh, it's not really going to do the job you're much much better looking elsewhere uh, that said i don't think it's a horrible device it is a very very fun device to play with it allows you a, a level of magnification that you can't really get easily with our phones or with a general lens on your point shoot camera or sort of stuff like that so if you want to play with it then absolutely it's great for if you have kids or for a little bit of an entry level into um, scientific exploration that sort of stuff it would be awesome as a tool there are definite places for it. If you do a lot of soldering, um, that and some of those little magic arms, or what do you call the handy arm clip things, whatever, I, I've got them, but I can't remember what they're called, hold things in place, set it at its maximum magnification so you've got a wider field of view, and you can see exactly what you're doing on the screen in front of you as you, as you solder. I wanted to say spot weld, but solder, that would be awesome. That would be very useful for that. If you are into uh, fine painting on things, whether it's models or little lead figures or that sort of stuff, it would be fantastic. It gives you a very, very wide, clear view. It is a 2K output, uh, not a 4K, not a 1920, but a 2K output. Uh, I've got the numbers here. What is it? 2560 by 1440. So high resolution, but not the clearest image. As I said at the beginning when I showed you that, that end portion is basically a very, very cheap, very, very inexpensive webcam. And that's exactly what you're getting out of it. The lens is nothing special, nothing to, to write home about. I will be looking into, and I may do a follow-up video, I will be looking into seeing if there is a replacement that, because it is just a screw in. The reason I didn't unscrew it uh, on the camera is just that, uh, it felt a little bit sticky. It felt like it was really tight in there and I didn't want to fight on camera with it. But I will look into seeing if there is a replacement, a better quality lens that could go in there. That might go a long way to clearing up the image and getting rid of that milkiness. The verdict is, uh, the questions that I asked at the beginning, is this a useful tool for content creators, either for myself or for those who don't have macro lenses and that sort of stuff? The answer is, at this point, straight out of the box, a resounding no, absolutely not. Uh, as a quick and dirty uh, insert, I have used it on one video I did a little while ago. I forgot a part and I wanted to show it and I did give it a try. It didn't work out great, but I will keep it in mind. It will stay on my shelf as a tool uh, and there will be points where I may pull it out. As a main tool all the time, absolutely not. But as I've said a couple of times, there are plenty of other reasons. And you know what? Just the joy of playing. We're all adults, we all forget about that, but there's a certain joy to playing and being able to see the world from a different perspective is really, really fun. I've had a lot of fun, serious, enjoyable fun playing with this. It is difficult to nail focus. It is difficult because of that incredibly shallow depth of field to keep something in focus across the entire plane. Just the slightest angle of the device or the subject will mess it up. But um, in terms of playing, 
absolutely it does rock for 30 bucks you can't go wrong uh with that said i'm done i'm out of here thank you so much thanks for watching my review and if you are uh, impressed or pleased or you've enjoyed yourself please click one of the many buttons that are around this screen somewhere and it, it does the channel good uh thank you so much and yeah have a great day <laughs>